Have you ever seen a flight overhead and wondered where it is going, or seen a unique looking aircraft and wondered what type or model it was? Well today I've got something exciting to share with the aviation enthusiasts out there. We're going to set up our own flight tracker using the FlightAware Pro USB stick and a Raspberry Pi. This is a really easy and fun project that allows you to track aircraft in your area in real time. First things first, let's talk about the FlightAware Pro USB stick. This little device is a dedicated ADSB or automatic dependent surveillance broadcast receiver that plugs into a USB port on your part. ADSB is a technology that enables aircraft to determine their position via satellite and then broadcast it. This information can be received by ground stations like the one we're going to be building. And this enables aircraft to be tracked. Using an antenna with the FlightAware USB stick, you can track aircraft at up to 400 kilometers or 250 miles away. To build your own flight tracker, you'll need to add a Raspberry Pi microSD card and a power supply to the FlightAware USB stick and antenna. Before we jump into the setup process, let's take a look at what FlightAware actually is. FlightAware is an online platform that provides real-time flight tracking, and not just the flight information like departure and estimated arrival time that you can find on Google. This gives you full flight tracking of airspeed and altitude, flight paths, aircraft information and historical data. You're also not limited to only commercial aircraft. You can track commercial and private traffic and even the occasional military aircraft. By creating your own tracker, which is called a PiAware tracker, you're contributing to FlightAware's network of over 30,000 ground stations, enhancing the accuracy of global flight tracking. In exchange for this, they provide you with a free enterprise user account this gives you full access to their platform so you can see flights that are well out of range of your receiver as well. Now you know a little bit about what it does, so let's dive into setting one up. And there really isn't a whole lot to it. First we need to flash the operating system to our microSD card. This is done by downloading the prepared OS image from the FlightAware website. We then burn it onto the microSD card using an imaging utility like Etcher. The image is ready to run, so you don't need to do anything else if you're using a wired Ethernet connection like I am. If you want to use Wi-Fi, then you'll need to follow their configuration steps to add your Wi-Fi network's information to the card so that your PAR knows how to connect to it. Once that is done, we just need to plug the components into the PAR. The FlightAware USB stick goes into one of the USB ports. You'll need to use one of the USB 2 ports, as the USB 3 ports are too close to the Ethernet port to allow a cable to plug in next to it. The antenna plugs into the USB stick and a little retaining nut locks it into place. Add the ethernet cable and lastly plug in the power supply to boot it up. It'll take a couple of minutes for the first boot and while that's happening let's head over to FlightAware's website to sign up for a free account. Once that is done we need to find our tracker's IP address on our local network. There are a few ways to do this. You can use a utility like Angry IP Scanner, or you can look at your network's DHCP table. I found my PowerWare device and IP address in my table. We can then enter the IP address into a browser on the same network to access the Pi. From here you'll be asked to associate your PowerWare tracker with your account by logging into it. Once you've done that, you're officially part of the FlightAware network and you'll see your account has been upgraded to an enterprise account. Your power will now start contributing data to the FlightAware network. I've had my power running now for a little under 3 months. From the FlightAware site, you can see your feeder's status and when last information was received from it. You can also see stats and graphs for the number of aircraft reported throughout the past 24 hours. You can even see which direction they were reported from and the type of aircraft positions received. They also give you a ranking which ranks your site against other contributors. I'm still not too sure how they arrive at the total rank position, but they give you some stats on your reported positions relative to others. Obviously if you're in a busier airspace, then you're going to be contributing far more to the network than others, but the network relies on having contributors in remote locations too. You can also see the flights which have been tracked by your feeder in the last hour, and the sites around you, including when last they reported positions. The real exciting stuff is on the SkyAware Anywhere page. Here you can watch flights around the world in real time. This is the area around Sydney where my feeder is based, 
and the aircraft are coloured according to their altitude. You can see a summary of those in view on the right, but you can also click on any aircraft to get more detailed information on it. This will also show you its flight path since you opened the window. We can visit the aircraft's flight page to show even more information. At the top of the page is the flight information you'd typically see if you did a Google search for the particular flight number. Below that is a map showing the planned flight path and the planned and actual altitude and airspeed. This particular flight has only recently taken off and is flying to Hong Kong, so let's pick a different flight that looks like it's coming into land. We'll then be able to see the altitude and airspeed history for the flight. So this is a regional domestic flight from Coffs Harbour to Sydney. And here we can see the actual flight path taken alongside the plan and also the altitude and airspeed history. For each aircraft you can see its planned upcoming flights, the current flights in progress and a log of past flights. On the right hand side are the aircraft details like the owner and operator, registration details and the current flight data. They also give you a gallery showing images of the aircraft type. So here's a similar aircraft by the same carrier but with a different tail number. This doesn't only track commercial aircraft, we can see small private aircraft as well. This one's doing circuits around a small airport, so it's probably a flight training exercise. You can also go into an aircraft's flight history and have a look at the details from any past flights. This will show you the flight path taken, airspeed and altitude, and you can even open up a full log and see its position reports and which facility reported them. There's also a mobile app which offers much of the same information as the web page, but in a mobile friendly format. I actually prefer using the app and I found it a bit more intuitive. So this is an exciting way to dive into the world of aviation tracking and contribute to a global network of aviation enthusiasts. Let me know what you think of the flight aware tracker in the comment section below and if you've got any questions on what it can and can't do. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials and reviews.